Okay, so it's uh, 5.08, uh, or about 10 after. Uh, sorry about that. I was uh, involved in answering a, another student's question, actually from another class. Um, so it wasn't even, quote unquote, his night to ask. But uh, we got to take care of it. We're fine. So this is uh, week seven, uh, 27th of February, 2020. And uh, you all are doing fine. These were, uh, you did some pretty good work on your uh, questions this week. Big thing uh, for this week on your discussion questions is on the issue of Rick uh, from Brazil, Russia, uh, India, and China. The real thing that wanted to pop out at you at that one is, is that in the past, it was fairly simple to manufacture your product, whatever that was, and then, and it would be oriented towards uh, American uh, consumer taste or other large market consumer taste. And then you would just market it in other countries. And, uh, and people were okay with that or would certainly want to buy it. Or you had enough sales to warrant uh, the effort. <clears throat> With the rise of the middle class in these countries, uh, what your text is trying to point out to you is that one of the dynamics of this is probably going to be a need for the company that wants to sell overseas in those areas to now have to take a more localized uh, approach. In other words, to either design, manufacture, and deliver their product in country to the local markets or uh, at the very least, modify that product to uh, to more ascribe to what the local markets want. Of course, it depends on the industry. Of course, it depends on the product. But that's uh, <clears throat> that's what we're getting at with what impact this might have on innovation. Question number two: uh, You all did good. You found out that the innovation creates three jobs. You defined each three. Um, <clears throat> a couple of you, three of you or so, uh, forgot to give me a specific job title uh, of each of those jobs. In other words, I get that you were able to find the, uh, the principle and were able to find the definition of the text. That's, that's easy, okay? What is more difficult is seeing how you can apply that text. If you truly demonstrate uh, what the text is trying to get at, okay? So when we talk about, um, let me pull up what we had here. Um, bear with me just a second as I'm going through uh, my files to the course. All right, let me share with you what we got here. All right. <clears throat> so question number two, as we're getting into the innovation creates three types of jobs, we find that it produces direct jobs, which are created to produce that particular product or service. Indirect jobs that are created around the innovation to bring that product to market. Okay, in other words, jobs at the supplier or uh, or your distributor companies. Okay, and then where the economic growth from all of this is a trickle down or a uh, ever increasing concentric circles uh, ripple effect out because now there's increased disposable income uh, becomes your third uh, type of job or what we call induced. All right, so, so let's take my example. Uh, and it may not be a good example. I mean, certainly uh, you all argue with me if you don't like it. Um, certainly offer a better one too, as you do that, okay? So in 
uh, in the three jobs if the iPhone, okay, if my phone is the, uh, the product, then what would be a direct job that's created to produce the iPhone? Okay, well, it'd be a, a job on the assembly line, manufacturing it, uh, applying the, uh, the volume button, right? Okay. <clears throat> then indirect jobs are created around the new innovation, the iPhone, to bring the iPhone to market, such as new jobs at supplier distributor companies. And my example is an indirect job could be that associate at the local AT&T store that helps you buy an iPhone and sets it up on the network. That would be an indirect job, right? Okay, and then because people's incomes from the manufacturer of iPhones and the manufacturer of these uh, uh, indirect jobs, we have uh, what would be considered induced uh, jobs. In other words, uh, as consumers spend their increased disposable income, on various sectors of the economy. Well, that could be almost anything, right? I mean, an induced job, think about it. If I'm a, an assembly line worker on an iPhone, then the, the salary that I have and the goods that I buy uh, could all uh, come from that iPhone. So those would be considered uh, induced jobs. In my particular case, I'm arguing that an induced job might be somebody who delivers a gaming app for the iPhone, okay? In this case, Candy Crush, I wrote this a couple years ago. Uh, I don't know what's the new, or what's the new app, popular game today. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, let me get some caffeine here from him. Do you see what I'm getting at? Okay, in other words, you know, specific jobs. A couple of you did a good job, you, uh, a real good job. You, uh, you nailed it dead on. Uh, a few of you didn't even answer the question. Uh, I gave you credit in, in large measure because I think you uh, were seeing it. Um, I think I was probably a little... Uh, how shall we say, why is my internet coming up? Anyway, uh, there we go. All right, I um, think I was probably a little easy on the grading this week, but uh, was it critical errors, okay? Okay, uh, and then you have your uh, scenario, you're gonna work on Local Motors Incorporated and Industry City Distillery. Okay, take a hard look at that one. That's a little uh, tough. All right, and then you've got, of course, your um, organization paper. Remember, this paper is about organizations, and in particular, the organization that you picked that you told me you were gonna write on, okay? All right, then next week is week eight. Uh, you're gonna answer uh, some questions. Uh, what are the questions? Okay, ah, okay, so uh, because your last chapter for reading was this week, uh, what I did is I threw you a curveball, okay? I've given you an article written by uh, a gentleman named William Onkin, who the article was published in the Harvard Business Review back in the, uh, I think the 1970s. So the article is dated, I'll grant you, but the precept and the concepts are not. In fact, probably becomes even more important in this day and age. Um, anyway, so that article PDF file I put in the announcement and on the email uh, or message that I sent to you. So you should have the article. If you do not, then you need to let me know. I want you to read the article, okay? 
So not a long re article, you can probably knock it out for what I call education through defecation. You know, one seating on the, uh, on the john should probably cover it, maybe two. Okay, that's a bit of a joke, I know it's a little coarse. But take that and then tell me what is the monkey in the article, uh, hint, it's a metaphor. And two, why is knowing the anatomy of the managerial initiative so important? In other words, this article is trying to help you as a leader. And I think once you realize what it's getting at, there are a lot of uh, very hidden pearls in this article. It's much more than time management. It is, it is development of your subordinates. It is letting your subordinates know what is the framework under which they are operating. This is so critical. Um, I mean, even I'm going through it right now with the boss uh, down in uh, Tampa that cannot, uh, for some reason, articulate uh, level of initiative and what the expectation is uh, on products. And it's very frustrating because, as you know, you, uh, you're given a task, you want to perform it, and you want to get it in on time. Hence the reason why you get a lot of deadlines in college. This is all preparing you for your time out in the real world, uh, at least as much as possible. But in the end, um, I shouldn't have to guess as to what is going on. Okay, I should know. And things run much smoother when people know what they're doing and what they're expected. All right, so that's all we're getting at. So that uh, complete, then you um, are going to go back to page 63 of your text, right? 63 of your text, and pull out the Xerox. Um, case study. Now this happens to go into building a, um, an innovative and entrepreneurial organization. Okay, so the scenario falls in that chapter that covered uh, the environment, uh, how do you integrate innovation with strategy, what is the external, what is the internal environments, how do you get top management support, what is building customer focus, innovative strategy, okay, and the like. All right. Just give you some, uh, just give you some context. Okay. With that, then of course you have your personal paper due. You have the rubric. I sent it out. Um, this tells you exactly what we're looking for. Okay. Um, should be no surprises here. This is more personal, okay? So the week seven on the organization, I would view that more of a, like a research paper, um, a research evaluation, if you will. This one, the personal innovation, there really is no um, research involved um, as much as it is an assessment of what you think. Strengths, weaknesses, uh, problems, issues within the, uh, your personal, professional life as it relates to innovation, uh, concepts from the text that help you improve. So, you know, the key here is on this article, or on this uh, personal innovation plan paper, is to be able to identify uh, strengths and weaknesses that you have as it relates to innovation, and then apply some concepts from the text that help you out. Now, see, and now you've been answering certain types of questions and doing scenarios for the last seven weeks. This should be very easy, okay? All right, and then in the end, don't forget your personal innovation plan. Now, here's a hint for you. Was there a personal innovation plan um, 
in your text at all. So good question, right? So you might want to go in and make sure you take a look at that. Because if you find that, you are going to ace that assignment. All right. Since nobody's dialing in, it's kind of hard to see if anybody has any issues, any type of uh, questions that you need to ask. I'll um, I'll sit here for a few more minutes, probably about another six or so, and then I'm going to move on in case anybody dials in. All right. Okay, um, had to take another slight break there and uh, and back. So you know we've got about thirty minutes. Give a few uh, opportunities here in case anybody wants to dial in. I think we've pretty much covered predominantly what is needed. Again, uh, go into your announcements. Make sure on the week eight you pull the article. Okay, who's got the monkey is the title. Okay, if you go in the announcements, you'll find it. All the way down here at the bottom here, right here. Who's got the monkey, okay? Also, make sure here is the scoring rubric for your week eight paper. And here's the scoring rubric for your week seven paper. Okay, go in there, take a look, make sure you answer all the questions, okay? And if you do, you should be fine, knowing uh, generally what I look for. All right. All right, well, thanks for uh, anybody watching and uh, your attention. I wish everybody good luck, and we'll uh, catch up with you over the weekend.